All right, my friends, as you've probably seen, I have uh, developed a transfer case handbrake kit for, um, well, basically for every model Hilux. Uh, currently, the models released are basically N50, N60, uh, like the Surfs, um, you know, LN106, basically the chain and gear drive transfer cases. Um, they're working really, really well. Um, as a lot of you know, I've been doing this for a long time, getting this kit basically perfected. Uh, long story short, it's perfected. I'm, I'm super happy. Um, I've had the one on my mate Michael's car here for oh, probably a good few months now. And as you can see, he's recently been uh, off-road and um, put it through its paces as well as the vehicle. So uh, no dramas here, everything's perfect. So basically I'm happy to get these things out on the market now as well because I know a lot of you guys are, uh, especially in the N70 community, you guys are really kind of looking forward to getting one of these. So uh, without further ado, here it is. I am also looking at getting the setup for the N80 sorted as well. So from as far as I know, so far they're basically the same transfer case. Uh, you've just got the ADD module, which um, I'm gonna get a made in here with an N80 pretty soon and uh, I'll basically see how it fits. I've got a feeling that I'll have to just make a relocation bracket for the, the ADD module, but that's no biggie. Other than that, everything should bolt straight on, I'm pretty sure, so stay tuned for that. I'm not forgetting about you guys, so. This model in particular, the N70, uh, this is a 2012, I think, but it's all the stuff involved with the handbrake kit is the same throughout all generations of N70. And as I said, pretty sure it's the same for the N80 as well. Yeah, let's uh, get into it and take a look. All right, so I've just painfully converted the car back to stock to start from basically what you guys will be starting from. Um, it's never fun putting shitty stock stuff back on a car, is it? So nonetheless, I've got all the goodies on the bench here, so in a sec I'll spin the camera around. So one thing I forgot to mention before, the reason why I actually developed this kit and have spent so much of my money and time kind of trying to get it to a saleable bulk production item for you guys is on my surf if you guys follow me already you already know this but I spent a lot of time I was just sick of the factory drums on the back so I actually made this handbrake kit to accommodate uh, a handbrake on my car because I've gotten rid of the whole drum setup altogether and gone with uh, the rear disc setup that I supply and sell which you can find on the website as well um, that works really, really well. So the rear discs, they're a pretty, I think they're a 315 uh, mil GQ Patrol rear disc and a GQ diesel single piston front caliper. Um, in conjunction with the transfer gas handbrake, I'm, I'm happy with how the brakes are. So um, if you are like me and you're sick of the shit braking performance and also the issues that drums cause, uh, I've had my fair share even after I've rebuilt everything new, set up properly, it's still dramas, that's why I ended up doing this, but um, check them out on the website. I've already got a lot of guys running these kits and uh, all good feedback, which is nice. So anyways, we'll get to having a look at the stuff and then we'll go and throw it on the car. Okay, so this is basically the whole kit, I think. I don't think I've forgotten anything. Obviously your stuff will be brand new and um, finishes may be different. Um, all this stuff is my prototype stuff. So these brackets may end up being anodized as well, I'm not sure. There's no reason to anodize them, um, but yeah. Nonetheless, you'll get this, but it may look a bit different, so don't freak out. Um, and obviously it'll be nice and new. So starting off, uh, we've got the hub. So this is a um, you know, custom rotor and also hub with a multi piece head that I've designed. Uh, and it's also got the locating spigot which is the most important thing on these setups because that's what aligns your tail shaft you don't use the bolts um, to hold it in the middle it's these locating spigots and you'll see when we go to install it that it's a really snug and proper tolerance fit so um all this um, black stuff this is 70 75 aluminium so this is a true aircraft grade it's super solid um, it's probably the equivalent to steel but it's a lot lighter. Um, as for alley, it is a bit heavier than your general, you know, six series alleys, but this stuff's super durable and especially the um, mil spec hard anodized coating on it. So this stuff, well, as you can see, this has been kind of against the, against the tail shaft flange and 
all that and literally it's not even scratched it's just rust that's on that so I could literally rub that off um, so yeah this this coating is super durable and it's never gonna rust um, it's gonna last forever essentially so yeah that's the hub that goes on the the output shaft of the transfer case as you'll see this is the the bracket this is what holds the caliper to the transfer case so then you'll have these standoff bosses which these bolts and washers basically go through like that and then that will be the standoff for the caliper like so which you'll see when we set it up so you'll get those uh, there's some bracketry for the cable um, some new bolts for the tail shaft because we can't use the studs because they're too short so these are um, high tensile all zinc plated so they're basically as strong and as weather resistant as possible uh, and these use a cone lock nut so these are the best kind of locking nuts um, much better than nylock and also much better than spring washers so uh, everything's premium quality here uh, there's a little adapter to adapt the factory cable to the new cable um, you know miscellaneous hardware for mounting and of course a custom cable as well so that's all pretty straightforward this stuff is super easy to follow you could probably do it in half an hour maybe an hour tops depends how much access to the vehicle you've got obviously if it's on a hoist it's going to be a lot quicker that's it i think we should go over to the car and start throwing it on okay so i think what we'll start with is the tail shaft um, so essentially you can see I've only got two, two studs and nuts on there. That's because I'm going to be taking them out again. So I'll just put these back in to show you guys how to remove them. On this model, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll run through it anyway. So these are a 14 mil uh, nut on these and they're a stud obviously. So depending on how tight they are, you might need a, another open-ended spanner um, or if you can get a ring end on there, it's even better. But on the back, back of the stud to kind of stop the, the tail shaft rotating. Um, it is better to put a spanner on these flats of the stud rather than jamming something in the uni. Um, not that it will probably cause any damage, but you don't want to risk fucking the bearings or anything in that uni because it's just a pain in the ass. So um, yeah, we'll undo, undo these nice and easy. Obviously I've just had them off so they're not tight. Okay, so that's that. Then we'll move back over to the center bearing. So as you can see, this model Hilux has a two-piece tail shaft. What we're gonna do is take these two bolts out of here. And before you do so, get yourself um, like an Oki strap or just something, cause you're gonna to wanna to support this. Um, you can take the whole shaft off if you want, but um, for the ease of kind of install, we'll just, just leave it hanging there. And uh, it's not too, not too bad. You might even need two, we'll see how we go. Buzz these bolts out. These are a 14, 14 mil. Now you can see this is loose, so I've just kind of wrapped this around the tail shaft so it can't really move on that axis. Um, there's a couple of places you can hook into. There's a spot over here on the um, cross member there. There's a few holes in there. And then probably over here, probably do the same thing maybe. Just got to be careful that the slip joint just a little bit further past this um, middle joint here doesn't slip out. So that will kind of hang. Then we can move back to the output shaft flange. All right, so this is where you may want a second Oggy strap just to support this end uh, as we take it off the output shaft flange. So the tolerances on these spigots are really, really tight. So this one's a bit, a bit stuck on there, so it may need a a slight tap with a mallet. Um, might even need a screwdriver. All right, there we go. All right, so that's off. What I'll do is just kind of hook an Oki strap through here and somehow suspend it. All right, so you can see how I've got that kind of rigged up now. That can hang there. All right, so what we're gonna do now, obviously you guys will, will hopefully you'll have four studs. A uh, bit, bit of a concern if you didn't, but we've just gotta tap these studs out. So it's always a good practice to put the nut back on the stud and kind of thread it to the point where it's just, just covering the end of the thread and give it a few simple little taps. Same with this one. 
and then we can just unwind them. And that's that. We've now got the, the bare output shaft flange ready to accept the disc. So one thing to do and to check is just to make sure that this face is nice and clean from debris and rust. It's a good idea just to get like a, a wire brush and kind of just give it a bit of a, a clean off. And especially in the spigot kind of uh, locating area, I want to make sure that's kind of clean and no debris in there. A bit of scotch bright works really well also. So I'll just give that a final kind of clean up with that. Because obviously if you've got like, you know, 0.1 mil of stuff on here, for instance, it's going to be basically running the disc out with 0.1 mil. So the cleaner you can get this, the more true the disc is going to be. And uh, yeah, it shouldn't be any issues. All right, so before we put this disc on, it's uh, definitely easier now to mount the bracket for the caliper. So grab a la bracket and the three M8 bolts. One of these will be longer. I think it's a 45 mil and these are a 35 by the looks of it. Um, so what you will have to do is take out this bolt in here. That'll be a 12 mil hex, I'm pretty sure take that out and that will be replaced. So the bracket mounts to this boss here and also this boss here. So before you do this, if you do have an old M8 bolt, it would be good to kind of put a bit of grease or WD or inox or whatever on it and kind of run it in and just check that all those threads are nice and cleaned out. Um, or if you've got a, a thread cleaning or even a thread tap, uh, as long as you're not too aggressive with it and just run that through, clean them out. This one should be fine because it's had a bolt in it but I've found a lot of these models, these are clogged up with dirt and crap, so um, check that. Once that's all good, we can put the bracket on. So the shorter bolts are the outside ones. So we'll get, we'll get those started and then I'll show you the little thing we need to do for this, this one that goes through the, the bearing housing. Okay. So all we're gonna do is just because this goes into the oil stream, essentially, I've just put some RTV on the threads, as you can hopefully see. Um, this is just to stop any oil kind of leaking out the threads and leaking down the case. Um, I have on my vehicle ran, when I was in the testing stage, I ran this without any sealant and it was fine. Um, technically it shouldn't really leak, but just put some RTV on there in case. Um, usually I'll use some just your regular RTV or some anaerobic sealant or some non-hardening. Um, they work really well, so we can pop that in now and we can just zip them in. And then just torque these down to about 30 Newton meters or so. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna have to do is get the disc and the tail shaft mounted back up. So this is pretty straightforward. Um, you'll need your four bolts. So these are M10 with the cone lock nuts. So just get them kind of lined up somewhere. I might put them over here on the, the cross member. Okay, so firstly, just put your, your hub up and check that it fits. As you can see, that tolerance is body perfect. So that will literally stay there. And it's a, a perfect fit. So there will be no, no balance issues or anything. Um, and find out the right piece of D. It should be the bigger one. Um, so that's all pretty straightforward. Okay, so this is where it gets a bit fun. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can basically insert, insert this and put a bolt through it and try and kind of hold that and push it on. Um, I will say to get a bolt ready for the center joint as well, because you're going to need to kind of push this all up in one. All right, so what we can do, we can leave the Oki strap where it is. That'll help us kind of push this up. Then we need to kind of offer this up and line up that bolt with the bolt hole and kind of get that spigot located and now just push the center bearing up and then just get this bolt started so obviously this would be a lot nicer with another person but that can hang there for now get this next one so you may need to wiggle it around a little bit to get it where it needs to go but for now that will hold there then we'll come back over to here and get this all sorted out. Okay, so the tail shaft's in and the center bearing is sitting there basically supported. We'll do that up once we've got this back on. 
but you can see we've got the first stud here. Um, the centering spigot is the thing that's holding it. And the good thing is once you've got that center bearing back up, um, that is basically holding this in place. So we can grab our bolts and slap them through. And then grab your nuts. No, not those nuts. These ones, the metal ones. Just kind of rotate it through. So once they're all started, you can grab a 17 and a 16. So it's a 17 mil nut and a 16 mil head. And just kind of get them all snug. And then with them all snugged down, just give it a bit of a spin around, have a visual inspection, check that it's all kind of looking true. And if it's all looking good, which it should, come back through and just torque them down to super fucking tight. So now we can move it back over to the center bearing. This is obviously already ready to go, so we can just nip these back in. There we go. All right, so brackets on. Now it's time to do the caliper. So the caliper goes this way. Hopefully you guys can see this. It's kind of hard to get a good angle, but what you'll need are your long M8 bolts and also the uh, offset spacers. Okay, so I find the easiest way to do these is just to put the bolt through there and then put the spacer over it. And essentially you've just got to have the, the bolt backed out to what's flush with the edge of the spacer. So yeah, this can take a little bit of fucking around because you've got to kind of spread the pad and slip it over the disc, but once you've got it over the disc, uh, it's not too bad, then you can kind of just essentially pull it up and you'll feel the thread kind of drop into its spot. Wind that one in, grab the top one, do the same thing, so just push it through, slide it through that spacer, and you can kind of wiggle it around and you'll feel it just drop in, and then literally just wind them in. That's that. I will say though, your caliper when you get it won't be adjusted. This one's obviously been used and it's adjusted exactly for this setup, so that's why it was a little bit harder to get on. Um, I'll run through the adjustment and everything once we've got the cable set up, but they're in. You can torque them down to about 25, to 30 newton meters as well. All right, and uh, we're good to go. The other thing to check is just um, rotate that tail shaft through and um, check that nothing is kind of binding. All right, so now it is time for the cable installation. So basically, you, this end is for the caliper, as you can see. Um, your adjustment nut on here will probably be a bit different to this one. This is just my mock-up kind of one that I drilled a hole in a bolt. Basically, we've just got to unwind that nut, and then what we can do is come and slip that barrel end through there, and that cable will come up, and then the cable will push, push through into there, and we can wind that in, leave it about midway. Uh, we'll come back to adjusting this once we've got the rest of the setup done, and then what you can do is send the other end up over the heat shield here. Okay, so before we go too far with the new cable, we've got to get rid of all the old factory stuff. Um, this is probably part of the reason why the brakes suck so much. But uh, nonetheless, um, it's kind of hard to show you guys, but obviously you'll, you'll see on your own one. There's normally a, a cover plate that kind of covers this area. So it's usually all hidden, but you've got kind of your left-hand rear cable that comes in you know, onto here. It's probably hidden just by the exhaust there. Uh, and then you've got the, over here on this little kind of cam arm, the uh, right hand rear cable. And this is the main cable that pulls from the, um, the handle inside the car. So I think the easiest thing to do is there is a pin holding the left rear cable to the main cable, get rid of that. So that basically is that loose, that can come out of there. So we'll tuck that out of the way shortly. And the next thing is basically to disconnect the, the main cable from the right hand side cable. We're actually going to delete this whole cam thing altogether. So the easiest way is to just get your 
four wheel socket or spanner or whatever and take these two bolts out. So then you'll obviously have this loose now. So what you can do is basically spin it around. Well, that one's just popped out itself, but spin it around till the, the slot kind of lines up and then it will just pop out the top. So that can be pushed aside. This can be thrown in the bin or kept if you want. Probably keep it just in case you ever need to go back for some reason. And then basically all that we want is the factory main cable. So this is what connects straight to your handbrake lever. The only thing that you'll have to do is just cut this uh, little plastic thingamabob off. So I've already done that, so I can throw that away. All right, so what we've got to do now is essentially set up the new cable bracket to suit the new cable. Right, so this cable will basically come up over this cross member and kind of around the outside here. So once we've got it around, we'll just um, out, undo the outer nut and then this bracket can literally slip on like so. So set that up kind of in the middle. I'm gonna set it up a little bit further back because I've already had it on the car. So you may need to unclip this, um, this corrugated conduit uh, just to kind of get it where it needs to go. But essentially that will mount right there and we can use that same bolt and mount that back into the hole. And then just tighten that down and we're good to go. Okay, so the next part, it's kind of hard to see because the exhaust's in the way, but I'll kind of hold it down here and show you. So you needed to get rid of the plastic cover off this end here, then you'll need to grab your little adapter, and it's pretty self-explanatory, that will literally just push through and clip back around. So that now adapts the factory cable to the new cable. Um, so that's on there, and I'll show you how to set up this bracket. Okay, so you'll get one of these billet kind of cable retaining brackets. That will slip into there, as you can see. And then you can grab the supplied cap screw and that will wind in and secure the cable in. As you can see there, hopefully. So now, this will effectively slot straight into this factory bracket, like so. And then you can see that there is a hole for an M6 bolt down here. So we can wind that one in. And there's also two holes on the top. So, all right, so that top one started. We can just wind that in. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, but if you can get it in there, that's good because it kind of stops this block from rotating. All right, there we go. That cable is now firmly secured in there, really nice. So then what you can do now is the bit of metal here that used to hold the uh, left hand rear drum cable, you can now insert the main cable into here and kind of just wrap it back around itself. Like so, hopefully you can see that. And uh, yeah, that's nicely secure. So then one other little thing, this is the rear uh, brake line that goes to the, the left drum. So what I'll do is just kind of zip tie that to the brake line here, you know, something like that. That'll hold it out of the way, won't be rattling around. So all we're going to do now is hook up these two. So the secret for these, hopefully you can see that. You get the 90 degree tang over the top and then you just spin it around and it'll pull out just like a regular key ring. And then that down. Yeah, insert it back through and there we go. So we're good, obviously got to do some cable adjusting, but nonetheless, that's pretty much good to go. Okay, so the first thing for adjusting the, the setup, once you've got it all installed, you want to take all the slack that you can out of the cable. So there's a few means of doing this. Um, you've got the threaded adjuster at this mount over here. Um, as you can see, I've already kind of maxed that out, so that's pushing that way, which is taking slack out. Um, and the other thing, we've got the caliper here. So this is kind of still got a bit more to go. So what we can do is 
back this out, you know, to say there. And that's taking more slack out of the cable. Which is actually pretty good. And then the final means is, which we might go and look at shortly, is actually adjusting it where the cable attaches to the handbrake lever in the vehicle. So, so far it's looking pretty good. So what I'll do, I've kind of maxed this out basically. So I will just tighten this up. So that's the first step complete. We've got as much slack as we can out of the cable with the adjustment that we have down under the vehicle here. So the next thing to do um, is you've got an adjustment for the, basically the piston offset um, inside the caliper. So I'll, I'll spin the camera around and focus on this and we'll run through how to set that up. And then I suppose we can go into the cab and adjust the, the handbrake lever if we need to. Okay, so as well as the, the cable adjustment, we've also got adjustment of the piston in the caliper. So if you can see this threaded section of bolt or stud here, basically this can be wound in and out to change the piston position. So as I've just mentioned, setting up the cable is the first thing. You wanna make sure that when you're setting up the cable that see this little stop here um, that I'm pointing to with the T-handle, that little stop, you need to make sure that the piston or the, the lever for the brake is hard against that stop, okay? So if you've, if you've adjusted your cable and it's kind of pulling it off like that, that's no good, you need to take some slack out of the cable. Um, so you want it to be just like that and um, you know, minimal slack. I'd rather you start it off on the looser side and wind it on as you go, uh, because obviously you don't want to be jamming this on and superheating the caliper and doing any damage. So I think that's a pretty good starting point. This is already kind of adjusted, so I'll kind of run it through quickly. Basically it's a six mil head on the end of that, and then I think it's a half inch, but a 38 mil fits okay. So you can basically crack that nut and either wind this clockwise, which pushes the piston in, or anti-clockwise, which pulls the piston out. So for you guys setting it up fresh, you'll be needing to put it in. So you can basically just wind it, wind it in until you kind of feel it touch. And then you can get a bit of a gauge by pushing on this arm. So I think we'll go have a look in the cab at any final adjustment at the handbrake lever. Most of you guys already know this, but I'll run you guys through it if you don't. And uh, this is pretty good to go. So obviously the other thing to test is just kind of make sure that this rotates freely. There will be a tiny bit of dragging. There always is on a disc brake setup, um, but you want to be able to basically spin it and it should, it should carry on like that. So one final little way to basically check the slack in the cable. Um, it's easier on the older model of Hiluxes, but for this, um, you can basically grab a hold of the joiner and pull on it. And if, if this cable here moves, you know, basically at the same time, as you're pulling on that, it's pretty safe to say that you've got the slack out of the system, and I'm pretty confident with that. So we'll go up into the car and have a look. Right guys, so the final basically point of adjustment for your handbrake, a lot of you guys probably already know this, but there is an adjustment nut on the actual handbrake lever. So hopefully you can see it, but nonetheless you can basically just unclip this console all right, so as you can see in there, there's the threaded adjuster. So basically, if you can't take all the slack out of the cable under the car, you can loosen off that lock nut and basically wind this on a little bit, which will pull the adjuster up. This one kind of looks like it's already kind of maxed. So it's literally as simple as just unclipping your console surround. And um, yeah, you can see in there, it's pretty easy to access. But I think we're all good to go. Right guys, so we're just uh, taking the car for a bit of a test drive. So as I said um, earlier, you want to kind of have this set up on the looser side. Um, obviously this has been set up before, so I was pretty much bang on. Uh, but you don't want to have too much, like the very minimum drag on the disc. Um, because obviously as that disc heats up, especially when you're kind of beating the brake, which we'll get to in a sec, um, that's going to expand a little bit and get a little bit tighter. Um, it kind of will wear itself to where it wants to be, but just start on the looser side and you can always wind some on. Um, so basically what we got to do is just go for a drive. Um, it's a good idea to take the tools with you to adjust it just in case it is too tight. 
Um, the first thing to look out for is like an excessive kind of smell. Um, and then just drive along and kind of like, you know, for five seconds or so, just pull the handbrake on for a little bit, just as you would as you're bedding, um, you know, brake pads in or whatever, and um, take it back off, keep driving, let it kind of cool down for another, you know, 30 seconds or so, maybe pull it back on again, just just lightly, not full, not full reef on, and um, let it off. That will start to put some heat into the disc, obviously deposit pad material. The same principle as your disc brakes on your, you know, on your wheels. And um, then you can go test it on a hill. So test it on a smaller hill first, see how it goes. Chances are you probably are gonna have to adjust it, but it's just a matter of fine tuning. As you've seen, there is plenty of adjustment both under the car and also in the center console. So we're just driving now to one of my test hills and uh, we'll give you a quick rundown on it working. All right, so we're at one of my test hills. Uh, this hill is probably one of the steepest uh, that you'll find in Sydney or on any kind of public roads. It's about 16, 17 degrees, which what I've seen is about the max you'll get. Anyway, I'll pull the handbrake on, out of gear, foot off the brake. It'll, it'll lurch forward for a sec until the drivetrain slack gets taken up, but as you can see, foot off the brake, out of gear, car running. Um, it holds just fine. So, um, as I said before, you may have to do a couple of tries and adjust it, but kind of once you get it adjusted, it should be sweet for you know, a lot longer than your drum brake setup would without having to adjust it again. Because basically, it is only used for your handbrake, and when you're using your handbrake, obviously the pads and the disc aren't rubbing past each other, wearing, so it shouldn't really wear. But uh, as you can see, it works and that's that. But one thing, and please, please, please do not make this mistake. Whenever you're leaving your vehicle, um, so if you're facing downhill like we are, turn your wheels into the curb and also you know, handbrake on full and put it in reverse if you're facing down. If you're facing up a hill, um, put the car in, say, first gear and also angle the wheels to the curb. So if that Things fail, handbrakes fail, I've seen it many times on many different cars and um, basically you don't want to fuck your car or someone else's or hurt someone. Um, even though it works, do not, just please don't solely rely on your handbrake. Um, but I've got complete faith in it and you know I've been testing it for quite a while now but it's just good practice to always leave it in gear and have the wheels pointing into the curb. Just if anything happens, it'll be a lot safer and it won't go rolling down the middle of the street somewhere, so. All right guys, so there you have it. It's all done. Uh, as you can see, it works pretty well. Um, I could safely say that before we set this up on Michael's car, we went and tested on the same hill and it had no chance of holding. It, it was basically like not having a handbrake on, as a lot of you guys already know. So, uh, yeah, it's all, all done, tested. I'm super happy. Uh, Mike's been happy for ages as well. Um, so yeah, if you want to get one of these, you can head to my website, www.boosterbuiltgarage.com, it's right across the screen. And um, yeah, basically you, you'll find it pretty easily. There's a few different models available. Um, as you probably already know, the ones for the chain drive and the gear drive kind of N50, N60 Hilux is already out. Um, so now the N70 will be out, so you can go get those. And uh, if you're interested in the rear brake uh, disc conversion as well, you can find those brackets on there. And what I might even do is like a combo deal if you want to get those and also the handbrake kit, uh, because you do need the handbrake kit to have a handbrake with those rear discs set up. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get to cleaning everything up and there's, there's nothing left to say. Hope you guys uh, enjoy it, and for those of you who have bought these products already, thank you very much, I appreciate the support and all the great feedback. And for those of you who wanna buy one, go do it because you won't be disappointed. So uh, yeah, thank you. And if you haven't already, check out my other videos. I've got plenty of stuff on plenty of different cars. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more stuff. Uh, like, share, comment, all that stuff. And uh, yeah.